Does the sun have an evil twin? Nemesis is a hypothetical astronomical object, more precisely a red dwarf or brown dwarf star orbiting the sun at a distance of approximately 50,000 to 100,000 astronomical units, just beyond the Oort cloud. The existence of this star was originally postulated as a possible explanation of mass extinction cycles in Earth's history. In 1984, paleontologists David Rupp and Jack Sapowski published an article claiming to have identified a statistical periodicity in mass extinctions that have occurred over the past 250 million years, using different forms of time series analysis. The two authors focused the extinction on the intensity of fossil families of marine vertebrates, invertebrates, and protozoa, identifying 12 extinction events in the time period considered. The average time interval between extinction events was estimated at 26 million years. To date, two of the extinction events identified, Cretaceous, Tertiary, and Late Eocene, could be related to events of great impact. Although Raup and Sapowski could not identify the causes of their alleged periodicities, they assumed that these events may have a non-terrestrial connection. The challenges of identifying a non-terrestrial mechanism has been faced by several astronomers. Two teams of astronomers, Whitmire and Jackson, and the Davis, Hodden, Muller team independently published similar hypotheses in 1984 to explain the mass extinctions advanced by Raup and Sapowski in the journal Nature. One of these hypotheses proposes that the Sun could have an undefined companion star in a very wide elliptical orbit, which would periodically disturb the Oort cloud, causing an increase in the number of comets traveling towards the center of our solar system with a consequent increase in any impacts on the Earth. This hypothetical star takes the name of Nemesis, or as it was promptly renamed by the media, Death Star, Star of Death, the name of the Star Wars Death Star. Granted the existence of such a star, the exact nature of Nemesis is still uncertain. Richard A. Muller suggests that the object is most likely a red dwarf with a magnitude between 7 and 12, while Daniel P. Whitmire and Albert A. Jackson argue that it is a brown dwarf. Previous studies on solar-type stars show that 84% of them are part of a binary system. Muller, who at the time worked at the Luchner Observatory Telescope at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, commissioned astrophysicist Saul Perlmutter to locate Nemesis, who in 1986 finished his thesis, Astronomical Research of a Stellar Companion of the Sun, without being able to confirm its existence. The last major extinction event was about 5 million years ago, so Muller estimates the distance of Nemesis from us at about 1 to 1 AL, identifying the position of the star in the portion of the sky occupied by the constellation Hydra, idea based on a supposed orbit derived from the observation of long, atypical periods of comets describing an orbital arc meaning the specifics of Muller's hypothesis. If Nemesis existed, it could be detected by next-generation astronomical telescopes, and if it were a brown dwarf as proposed by Dr. Dan Whitmire and Albert A. Jackson IV, then the WISE mission, which began on December 14, 2009, could easily find it. Matthijs and Whitman have suggested that the hypothetical period extinction could be caused by the oscillation of the solar system across the plane of the Milky Way. These oscillations can lead to gravitational disturbances in the Oort cloud with the same consequences proposed by the possible orbit of Nemesis. However, the period of oscillation is not well observable and could differ from the 26 million years necessary for the theory up to 40% more. From 2000 onwards, planetoids have been observed beyond Neptune's orbit, such as 148209-2000-CR105, having a very pronounced elliptical orbit and a high perihelion value, such as to exclude the influence of Neptune on these planetoids. In these cases, generally the remote possibility of the passage of gas giants or stars in the extreme periphery of the solar system is invoked. In our case, it could coincide with Nemesis. Nemesis has also begun to influence literature. Isaac Asimov, a science fiction writer, has dedicated a book to this star. There are some scientific inaccuracies. The catastrophes caused by the brown dwarf or red dwarf, we do not yet know, are exaggerated and the star is not described as a companion of the sun. But when we talk about Nemesis, it is still an interesting topic. 
The name Nemesis derives from that of the Greek goddess Nemesis. Nemesis is a goddess of Greek mythology, according to some, daughter of Zeus, according to others, daughter of ocean and night, and then possessed by Zeus himself in the temple of Ramune. She generates an egg that is collected and delivered to Leda, and from which Elena and, and the Dioscuri will come out. Her name comes from the Greek Nemesis, Nemo, to distribute, from the Indo-European root Nem in Greek mythology, and was the name of the goddess Distribution of Justice. Justice, understood as a juridical code, was instead attributed to the goddess Dish. Nemesis was especially concerned with bringing justice to unresolved or unpunished crimes, distributing and infusing joy or pain according to what was right, especially persecuting the wicked and the ungrateful to fate. There is no corresponding goddess in the Roman religion who instead inherited the Dish hour as the goddess of jurisdiction, the current Iustitia with the blindfold and the scales in her hand. However, the Romans dedicated an altar on the capital where the soldiers were to Nemesis, used to lay down a sword before leaving for war. In Isaac Asimov's science fiction novel Nemesis, Nemesis is a red dwarf discovered by chance by Eugenia Insignia, an astronomer who lives on Rotor, one of the colonies founded by the Earth. It is almost invisible and very close to the Sun, 2.5 light years, on a collision course with the solar system. The scientist immediately turns to a high exponent among the Rotarians, Janice Pitt, who however orders her to remain silent on this incredible discovery. This is because Pitt dreams of building a new civilization detached from her native planet, destined to conquer even the entire galaxy. Eugenia, albeit reluctant for her pride as an astronomer, is therefore forced to silence her discovery from all of her, including her husband, Brill Fisher. This does not prevent the astronomer from receiving the possibility of baptizing the newly discovered star, which will be called Nemesis, a reference to the Greek goddess of justice. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like, and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality. Researchers from the University of California, Berkeley, and Harvard University have shown with a mathematical model that all stars would be born in binary or multiple systems. Consequently, our sun should also have had its twin. The scholars coordinated by theoretical physicist Stephen Stoller and radio astronomer Sarah Sadovoy, who follows Hubble on behalf of NASA at the prestigious Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, have practically dusted off the theory of Nemesis, the bad twin of the Sun, which cyclically, every 27 million years, would reappear at the edge of the solar system. The star is called in this unflattering way because, according to some studies, many of which conducted in the late 1980s, due to the gravitational force, it would bring with it dangerous comets capable of targeting the planets of the solar system, including our Earth. Although there is no direct evidence, Nemesis would be responsible for the mass extinctions observed on our planet, which occur with a disturbing periodic cycle. Non-avian dinosaurs and other groups of animals 64 million years ago in the late Cretaceous would be extinct precisely because of an asteroid carried by Nemesis. But let's go back to the study that gave new life to this suggestive theory. Scholars have determined the non-solitary birth of stars thanks to the study of the molecular cloud of Perseus, considered a real cradle for stars in formation. Through the Van Damme mission, several young Class Zero stars, less than 500,000 years old, and Class I stars, less than a million years old, have been surveyed inside the cloud, which is 600 light years from us. Combining this data with other observations, the researchers identified 45 lone stars, 19 binary systems, and 5 multiple systems. From the analysis of the distances, positions, and distribution of the stars through a mathematical model, Sadovoy and colleagues came to the conclusion that they all arose from binary or multiple systems. Solar-type stars are not primordial, underlined Professor Stoller, but they are the result of the rupture of binary systems. According to estimates, the Sun's twin should currently be at a distance of three light days, or about 500 UA astronomical units, the distance between the Earth and the Sun, hidden somewhere in the heart of the Milky Way. Although its defined twin, Nemesis could be a weak brown dwarf, reduced in this situation by the Sun, which during the accretion phases would have stripped most of the dust and gas from it. Evidence of its existence, as specified, has never been found. However, some think it can be read in the curious orbit of the dwarf planet Sedna, influenced by the gravitational force of a mysterious celestial object. Steven Stoller, an astronomer from the University of Berkeley, and Sarah Sadovoy, a colleague from Harvard University, 
Following research carried out on a molecular cloud, a type of interstellar cloud in which the density and temperature allow the formation of molecules of hydrogen starting from single hydrogen atoms, in the constellation of Perseus have brought to light new elements that would confirm the possible existence of Nemesis, the hypothesized twin star of our Sun. The research was published in the scientific journal of the Royal Astronomical Society. The research of the two astronomers was based on the study of data relating to the Perseus cloud, a huge cloud of gas and dust about 600 light years from Earth collected between 2013 and 2015 through the Very Large Array, the grouping of radio telescopes located in New Mexico, which made it possible to photograph the star formations within the cloud. Stoller and Sadovoy combining this data with those that emerged from another study referred to the Gould's Belt, a partial ring of stars that extends for about 3,000 light years. Through mathematical models, they carried out a real census of the single and double stars of Perseus, ascertaining that there were 55 young stars of which 45 are lone stars, 19 are binary systems and 5 are multiple ones. Research has focused on low-mass stars such as the Sun or smaller to understand whether it is normal for two or more stars to be born together, thus forming binary or multiple systems. Over the decades, in fact, astronomical observations have shown that systems formed by two or more stars are very common, especially among stars of large mass. For a long time, therefore, scholars have wondered if they were generated in this way or if they were stars born separately and joined by gravitational attraction only later. Thanks to this research, the two astronomers came to the conclusion that all stars of low mass, therefore similar to the Sun, were born in binary or multiple systems from which they separated in 60% of cases. It follows that it is highly probable, therefore, that our Sun was also born with at least one twin star, the Nemesis star, which has been hypothesized to exist for about 30 years and which should be, according to some estimates, at about 500 AU astronomical units, i.e. the Earth-Sun distance from the Sun. Obviously, this is only circumstantial evidence and further studies on other clouds will be necessary to verify the real effectiveness of the mathematical model. But in the meantime, the suggestions on the twin of the sun have come back to light. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality.